What kind of musicians do you get inspired by on a daily basis? Um, musicians on a daily basis. Um, I mean, Trent Reznor is a big uh, influence on me. I mean, when it comes, I, I mean, when it comes to doing my own stuff, when it's like, um, I, I'm interested in his way of putting uh, a production together. Like, um, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the studio, see how uh, he he's, he and Atticus too, uh, they're doing their compositions and, and how it is to create a Nine Inch Nails track from, or just one of their like soundtracks, like from, from beginning to end. Um, uh, that is a musician I really look up to. Uh, Martin Gore from Depeche Mode is another one as a songwriter. Um, and uh, yeah, and when I think when I when I'm doing like my lyrics and stuff, Lane from Alice in Chains has been a huge inspiration. Uh, and it's not like I think about these people every day, you know, like when you said it on a daily basis. But I mean, those are my musical if I would call them mentors, mentors without ever meeting them, you know? Yeah. It's, um, I definitely know the feeling of having those kind of mentors, but w- when you're taking in kind of inspiration, how do you, um, find that balance between injecting your own personality while still kind of taking in inspiration from others? Cause I know it's all too many times I'm sat, you can probably see the guitars behind me. I'm sat all too yeah. many times <laughs> playing and I think, oh, that's kind of inspired by that. And then I listen, I'm like, nope, that's a copy of that, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's hard to find that balance. Do you are you able to take in the, those inspirations and then quite easily turn them into your own thing? I think so. I don't. I don't really. I don't think about that. It's it's not like I ever go in and do a copy paste. It's just it's there. I I guess good inspiration is something that you have in the back of your head when you start creating your own stuff and it might influence you somehow but um i don't know i always gone f- for my for my own you know I, I my own interpretation of something um so i mean i i guess it's it's for me it's not it's difficult for me it just comes natural i guess but it could be i can see it being difficult i mean especially when you start out and you don't you haven't found your sound yet and you want to you know, you play your covers, you, you want to be as your heroes or whatever. But then after a while, the longer you, you're you in the scene or the longer you've been doing this, you find your own voice. And then that that's just an inspiration of others, but it turns into you, to your own. And I think that's some really cool with this this whole genre. And that's how you how this genre will progress too. Like, I don't think the bands that are or artists that are just copying people they will last might they might have a a moment but the longevity won't be there but it, it's all good to take inspiration you know uh, from 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 others uh, I, I see that as a learning period as well mm. what what um, do you do to kind of or I know you said it comes quite naturally to you but do you do anything to kind of maintain inspiration and maintain it like i know for, for example for me I, mean, I i know if i'm if i keep with like a good daily routine and and make sure i'm doing certain things out throughout the day i find it that much easier to clear my head and then feel inspired to do something do you have things that help you just uh, like on a daily basis that just keep your brain ticking and keep things fresh when it comes to like staying inspired um i mean it's it's, it's quite different from what i do on my own here in my studio when i do my own like uh more ambient stuff because uh, that's an uh that's an it, it's not so immediate um and it just i could be working on a song for days you know like i i, I a part part comes into my head that i need to when I'm doing the fucking dishes or I'm cooking or I'm doing like something and then I have to run in the studio and do it. When it comes to in flames, it's like we set, we have two switches. We, we, we either in touring mode and that's all we do, or we recording an album and that's all we do. We don't re- really write in between. So when it comes to that part for in flames, it's like music 24 seven. And like, you're so occupied by it. So it's, 
that's why also the, our album sounds quite different from each other because they are like s- small photographs who we are at that point. Um, I don't know if I answer your your question, but <laughs> I don't know um, actually. I can't remember. Yeah, what I asked. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, but I, I mean, you cannot force inspiration either, or whatever. And it's just, it's just, I feel it comes natural, you know. If if I'm tired and my brain is somewhere else, then usually nothing good will come from it, you know. I really have to dive into, especially when it comes to inflames. I really have to be there. I like. Hundred percent focused on what I'm doing. Mm. Um, I like and, the um, um, what you said about sort of a photograph for each um, for each yeah. album. I think it then almost takes, in some ways, takes the pressure off because I think a lot of people have this mindset, and I know I've fallen prey to it, where you you have this idea that you know, oh, but I might write a better song in a year or I might, I might be able to improve this song just a little bit. But I don't know what that yeah. word means, better song. I mean, it's like, what, what, what is, this is not a competition. It's like, what, what is better? I like, yeah, to whom? <laughs> it's like, like, uh, yeah, I, I might, my chord progression might be better, but w- again, what, what does, does that mean? You know, there's no one, I don't know. Music is so personal. Like, um, so you become better at your instrument. Maybe you have, you have, a, a um, the possibilities of finding more notes and more chords and more ways to get the idea that you have in your head out on tape. So if we, if we can call it tape, <laughs> a lot of people record on their computer, but I still call it tape. Um, uh, that says a lot about me and my age, but anyway, um, so, so maybe that is a, it's a, you know, something that's something I do with my vocals. Like I want to learn how to or get better at understanding my, what I can do, my boundaries and also where I can take my vocals. Like I, I have a vocal coach since, um, we did battles, which is like 2016 and it's not to become the best singer in the world. It's just to understand my my voice i want to know it inside out i want to know when i am yeah yeah my limits or how far i can go mm. i think that um that drive to keep learning is something that's important i i think some of the um some of the kind of bands like i i, I listen to a lot of alter bridge i, I really love them and, and i i, I, yeah. I kind of love um Whenever I hear, I hear Mark talking about him wanting to kind of learn ideas of the guitarists and stuff, you know, trying to yeah. pick pick those up. I think there's a certain kind of, um, I think my my I'm only sort of uh, guessing, but I feel like having a sort of a humble sense of wanting to keep learning is important. Is, do do you kind of agree there? Having that sort of yeah yeah yeah. Thing? I mean, if you if you're in yourself, I mean, like knowledge is is great whatever in life you know, like the more you know usually the better you are to others as well like like you have an understanding of the world or understanding then of your instrument and it's and it makes it's easier to express yourself in all kinds of ways um so i i i'm interested i want to learn you know a piano i want to understand chords i want to understand scales i want to understand stuff like that i want to know how to tell someone else it's like okay we have this but i want to go here how do how do we do how do we get there uh if you don't have no understanding of how to get there it's it's really difficult mm. um so how, how yeah. do you feel like your your um sort of continual learning when you look back at some of these sort of photographs, if you will, the, mm. the, the albums and or any sort of piece of music you put out, um, do you ever get kind of uh, nostalgic or sort of um, you know looking back at these? Like, like I like I like the word photograph because I feel like it's quite yeah. it kind of resembles quite a lot. And do you ever look back and think, oh, I was so different when I wrote that? You know, as a person, not just as a musician. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not nostalgic per se but yeah sure i can think of moments um i can lie i i can look back and with a smile at the naivety you know we had in the beginning which good things comes from that too when you don't 
know your boundaries. You don't know your limits. You just go ahead. And that is something I, I loved about, like where I thought about metal in general, when I got into the music, I thought, and, and started, we started to play. It's like, oh, there's no boundaries. We can do whatever. Like this is, it's an open field. As long as there's loud drums and guitar and vocals and bass, and we're all good, you know? But then after a while, this genre have different styles and boundaries and if you take that chord you belong to this genre and if you if you do this then you belong to that and and people start talking about different styles and it's like what it all comes from the same source and that's where i where i want to be uh but yeah sure i can look back at but more like moments than the actual like where we were at that point more than oh we did that song or that album or so on but of course like the gesture race for me is special since that was the first in flames album and i think it was done in 11 or 12 days including mixing i like everything you know i have i had i probably had one day to do my vocals the whole album and now it's a whole different preparation so so yeah. but we still have we still try to have the same mentality even though of course things have changed you know mm. I feel like a lot there are probably quite a lot of um, smaller bands out there and and musicians who struggle with that those that idea of boundaries. You know, um, I, I should do this or I shouldn't do that with my music. Um, yeah, you have to let just let go, right? You know, not don't t- have people tell you what what to do or not to do. I mean, of course, you should listen to advice. Here, I'm coming with an advice. Advice, so you could listen to it but it's up to you you know but well, as soon as you put yourself in in a in a box i think you're lost already you know like i, I want to be i know i mean like when you're a new band you, you can do whatever like after we're in what are we now 14 albums down the road it's it's people have a certain expectation and so on but we still try to be as free as we can and we try to do uh not the same stuff again and again and again, you know, like, but have that vibe and that feeling. I think it's cool to find your own identity, but then try to push it as far as you can. Mm. Do you, do the, the kind of, um, speaking of boundaries, I guess is both sort of musical boundaries, creative boundaries, and also kind of, um, personal and career boundaries and things. Are there things that you've had to overcome that, are there any boundaries that you feel you've kind of had to push past in yeah not re- in your not read comments what people say about you like online or whatever that is something that in the in the earlier days you absorbed everything and you got angry and you got sad and you get annoyed and you get super happy too like when people are saying positive things but usually if there's a a thousand positive comments and there is five that are negative you focus on the negative which is something you just have to learn and you have to understand that as soon as you sign a deal and 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 release an album people will say something and that's that's fine that's something that you really have to overcome and that you can't cater to uh, to what people like you can't write for other people first you have to be happy yourself so you can actually yeah, because you live and die with this music. No one else. You can, you know, people come and go, and 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 and. But your music is there, like with you for uh, until you're gone, basically, and after as well. So that is something that we we learned as a band and, and as a person as well, and um, something that we you got from the which is recent, of course, uh, about the pandemic is not take things for granted. Like this will not last forever. That is something a band like us, I think we took for granted for a long time, like, or, or other bands as well, even though I can't speak for them. But it's, you know, you you write an album, you, you record an album, you release an album, you go on tour, you want, you expect people to come to buy your merch, buy your albums and be there and put their hands in the air when you ask them to and stuff like that. And then that was gone. And then it's definitely now like every show is, is special and unique. Um, and it's, it's a it's a whole different world I think it's like a life before and after the pandemic at least to me yeah it does feel um, it, it does feel like interactions have changed somewhat I can't even put my finger on why it, like it, it, it seems obvious right like we spend two years or so kind of not really 
in contact yeah. but it's, it's hard to uh put your finger on how some of these things i feel like some of my good friends i feel like nothing's changed you know i feel like i can just sit with them as i would have done two years ago a slightly different person yeah. but um but that's why they are your good friends because you feel that's the that's the thing you know that's mm. um but I, for 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 us as a band i, I think it, there's a life before and after you realize what you were missing i was missing my touring family a lot um, the crew the guys in the band and and the fans and the interaction and the the, the feeling you know so really now it's just enjoy the moment be be in the now more than anything you know have, have you had any kind of other than the pandemic have you had any sort of mo like maybe tougher moments that you've pushed through and then allow you that perspective of wow this is really special what we've got because you know sometimes it is those harder moments that then remind you like oh like you know oh we nearly lost this and this is really special you know um I mean, I guess, I mean, we've gone through a lot of members and like every time you, you lose a member and, and that is tough because that's, you know, you don't want to do that. I mean, that's not the, like when you start out, you want to be the same people that go through different things and you, and on the high together and that's it, you know, but, but then something you have to learn and adapt and every time it happens, it's like, oh, you know, but then someone else comes along and you, 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 you in, that inspires you and then you um i guess you grow you know uh, yourself so those are moments for sure that's that's tough but i never felt like okay that's the end of it um as long as that you have the feeling when you're like let's say you play live and three shows in a row you you walk off stage and be like oh this is not for me i, I don't want to be here then it's i think it's time to give up but but as long as you have that feeling, like this is the greatest thing in the world. And it's so rewarding to be on stage and see the fans and, and what they bring to us. Um, and and uh, the exchange of, of energy back and forth between band and fans. As long as that exists, and then you will continue. So, and then that will help you overcome any, any obstacles as well. Mm. You know? How, with uh, that kind of knowing what's for you you know um sort of pursuing what's what's right for you how do you find that kind of uh you know there will have been smaller moments rather than just deciding a whole career but there'll be smaller moments day to day where um you have to kind of make that choice and i guess sometimes you know um you might maybe come out of a show that was just that wasn't that great for some reason you know um or a studio experience or just any sort of musical career thing how do you kind of differentiate those moments of ah oh, that sucked but i still love what i do from just like questioning oh am i doing the right thing entirely um i guess you just know right it's it's in like i know in my heart that this is the best thing ever like music have given me so much and like as a fan and as being part of of uh of a band that's traveling the world and, and have a sound that's all over the place and meeting all these wonderful people. It's you just know, I guess there's no, it's difficult to explain. Um, and, and if you are sure about your, uh, uh, about that, then of course there are small things will happen. Like not wh whatever you do in life, you don't have like 10 out of 10 days, you know, like the, the greatest, this is the best day ever again and again and again. You have dates where you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. Ah, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. But the moment we are in stage, all the other things disappear because you can't really think about your troubles or whatever. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's a way, it's like, instead of going to, um, um, instead of having a therapy session, it's like right there and then you get, just get rid of your problems and you feel so much better after. Um, and I, it's, 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 it's difficult to put in words because it's just, you just know. And I think people, I, I guess people do it differently, but yeah. Yeah. I, f I feel like more people nowadays need that thing, whatever it is. Um, 100% because our life is extremely stressful, especially for a young person growing up in today's society with all the you know the information that they have to carry and 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 
decipher and and you know all that stuff i i am i i am not envy of any 20 or 20 year old i i'm, I'm really happy where i am <laughs> you know what i mean mm. so yeah i think there's this so there's a lot to be said for finding something whether it's music or whatever or any art form or maybe it's not even art it's just something you enjoy that um where you enter that kind of that like you know that sort of flow state that that sense where there's nothing else happening in your mind it's just what you're just doing you're focusing on what you're doing and that's it and i think um yeah i definitely think you have to because being on like i i see my kids you know like on the phone all the time or, or whether it's like instagram or tiktok or youtube or whatever it might be and there's like they fed with so much information all the time good or bad but it's like for them to to you know catalog everything like in their heads while you know trying to find their own place it's it's got to be it's tough you know yeah. and uh, we talk a lot about a lot of things and and it's just hear there what they say it's just whoa you know like <laughs> and then i have to be there on the side you know and on the sideline and try to guide them too it's it's, it's not easy mm. i think it's so difficult as well because everything is so short form nowadays that you could be watching like a stupid cat video and then you could be watching like a really depressing moment and then you could be watching something really inspiring and i don't think we're designed to just be going through these massive no like, no no no, no. and i jobs. think you pick up small things even though you, you're not aware of it at the moment like you know sparks of things like here and there or, or grains of things that you just it's a bit after a while it becomes a big you know mush or whatever you want to call it in your head and you need an outlet you need you know, a thing. So uh, like a hobby of sorts, whether it's music or art or what, any kind, it's like, I think that's really, really good just to wind down and, and, and just like, yeah, or meditate, you know, like, and I, I would recommend music to anyone. Um, it's, it's whether it's for it's like, that's another thing too. In, in today, it's like, so you got to make it, you got to make it. And you have all these people that on TV or they, on online as well like they portray this image of being like the greatest life ever and then you have a lot of people looking up to that and i want to become there too but that's not what's most important just create just do something you know just throw colors on a fucking paper for a while and see whatever happens like throw notes on a <laughs> into a four track recorder see whatever happens like it doesn't have to be stadium songs or art exhibits in Paris or whatever. It's like, yeah, you know, start on small scale. That's very rewarding too. Mm. I think that that expectation is just something that's so difficult. And especially when there's, again, you see so much in such a short space of time, your expectations can contain so many so just contains so much that like from, yeah. from all the things you take in and I'm, I'm like you were saying i think you i think you're right like you take in even if it's just a tiny amount of that short 15 second video it just sends your day slightly in a different direction and then you watch another one and another, or you know you um and particularly if the, if the things or the people you follow aren't particularly inspiring or or positive it yeah, can really, yeah, yeah i think enough I mean, that's for us when we record too you know during the day you hear something you're not aware of it but it's in the back of your head somehow and that ends up on the album somehow you know i i i've been saying this before when it comes to our music because uh, obviously people have their favorite period of of the band or some some person like one album some like everything whatever but i think as an experiment it would have been funny not that this is possible anyone but anyway if if our albums we recorded on the same same day with the same people with the same gear and we were feeling exactly the same i think everything would sound way more similar similar than it does now when stuff is recorded you know two years in between three years in between you grow and different people around different feelings different vibes or whatever so it's 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 definitely you you are more um um 
open to things around you than you might know. And that makes you react in a certain way or do certain things in a certain way. How do you think your uh, the way you approach lyrics and, and, and ideas, um, and we can kind of spin this into the new music as well, you know, um, yeah. how do you, uh, or how has, I'm trying to think the best way to phrase it. So obviously when you write lyrics and ideas, there are certain emotional uh, connections that you make with things. And, um, you know, if you're, in a particularly down period, maybe you might focus on more the negative things. And if you're in a happy period, maybe you focus more on the positive, maybe, I don't know, but um, how has your focus, your sort of emotional focus changed over the course of your career? Have there been some albums where the focus has been on harder topics, things that you've struggled with? And then how has that kind of changed? And then what would you say is like, I guess the emotional focus of the, of the new music? I think in the early days it was more fictional and then after a while it became more of an internal thing and you you were dealing with your own demons and that's a way instead of going to a therapist you wrote it down and on paper and then you gave it away to the world and it was out of your system and, and it, you know and and now on this later one is more me looking out you know more than inwards um and more an observation than anything. Um, but it, for me, it's always been very cleansing to write my lyrics and do what I do. As I said, I, I own it for a while and then I give it to the world. <laughs> and then it, it doesn't belong to me anymore. It just takes different um, routes. And, and I use a lot of metaphors uh, when I write. So, and it, I guess it's a way from, I can always say, oh no, it's not about me. Like it's a, it's a, it's a wall I build. But at the same time, it's something where I want people to do their own interpretation and turn our music, our lyrics into something that they own, like it's theirs, because it makes it greater and it will stay longer. And I love hearing what people say, you know, when we meet fans and they explain, okay, this is my interpretation. I feel this song means this to me. And I will never say like, oh, no, that's not what it's about, unless they ask me and like, I want to know for sure what you mean. And then I might say something, you know, but I do, don't like to describe and overanalyze. And, and because I, I think it takes away from the art itself and from a person's experience. Hmm. Are, are there any ex- like um, interpretations you've heard of your lyrics over time that have been just as, if not more powerful than maybe the thing that you actually wrote it about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, many, many times, many times. Like, what it, what, it amazes me when I hear, it. like, you know, what, what people do with the lyrics and what they what they say and what it means to them. It's like, are there times where I, it's difficult for me to hold back my tears because what they, how they explain and how it helped them in certain situations, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah. It's the, the way of kind of you say you're sort of looking outwards more with with the more recent uh, yeah. your more recent sort of approaches what do you think has prompted that shift from a, a more internal look to a more oh, it's at a pandemic again like it's it's difficult i hate talking about i mean like tired of talking about it in a way and i think people are tired of hearing me saying it or uh, others talking about about the pandemic but it, we, i can't get away from it that was such a huge thing like we were in the we were in new zealand when they told us that you had to go home. Like the show didn't happen and we were supposed to go to Australia and it was like, you can't go there. You will end up in, in quarantine. So go home when there's a chance. And then we entered a vacuum. <laughs> like I, it, it, in the beginning, it was a weird sensation. Like, like I was, it was, I was, I felt really calm because I felt I was connected to it every person on this planet in a way because we were all affected by this somehow you know and that's something i never experienced and i think none of us experienced this um and uh, but after a while it's like got frustrating when you knew it's going to last and when after a year or so when our society was opening up a little bit more even we didn't we did not have as heavy restrictions as 
some other countries or a lot of other countries. We had more like recommendations in a way. But then this Omicron or Omicron or whatever it was called hit again. And then it felt like the world shut down, you know, for real once more. And we had no idea how long it's going to last. And that was really depressing and difficult. So all this made me think about like time and what we do with time and how we, yeah. If, if we knew, we would know, like, there's an end to things. Like, how do we react? Like, I mean, obviously we know it's going to end somewhere, but we kind of live like we don't know. And we think like we, it's going to last forever and ever. Like, you know, relationships and, and our planet or whatever, you know. So I, it was definitely a, a shift for me in thinking about lyrics mm. do you think and then yeah do you think looking to the future the there's a potential for that shift to focus inward again or do you think you now yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's difficult to get away from i mean it's my it's my brain <laughs> like it's it's of course and it, again it's, it's a way for me to deal with whatever i have inside it's very as i said very cleansing and uh, yeah for it. I mean, it's not easy to put things in words and it's kind of, I mean, for me also that I write in English, it's Swedish is way too close. I don't, I don't want to write su- Swedish lyrics because it's it's almost way too personal. <laughs> so for me in English, it's, all, it's a different way to express myself. Um, but there will come thing, lyrics where it's way more internal again, for sure. Mm. But we'll see. I, I mean, I have no idea what the next album is going to be like. Yeah, I've I know personally when I've written lyrical ideas that are more metaphorical, sometimes I can't help but feel I'm trying to avoid talking about my own issues. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Sure, sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. For uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a tricky, tricky concept to get around. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank you so much for chatting, man. I'll um, I won't I won't take too much of your afternoon. I'm sure you're I'm sure you're busy with them. Um, a million musical things so um i'll uh if we could get your question for the next guest's conversation um that would oh, be great to start damn that, that came out of the blue uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have known uh it's all right um wow can be whatever direction you want to send the conversation in and it's a musician you're you're talking it's, to yeah 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 or a musical person a musical person um, and I've been um, totally screwed over by these before so you can, uh, you can be as nice yeah, as yeah, as yeah. You wow um, how do I say this there's like a, a million things I could say but at the same time I'm, I'm just like I have no idea um I find it funny how um how much importance gets placed on this sometimes. People like yeah, it's, it's yeah, amazing yeah. No, how much I know. people kind of, <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, so um, I mean that in a good way for the record. Yeah. Okay, do you feel like this might be for for a, someone who's been doing it for a while like do you feel your your past is a uh, uh something that is not positive or negative but it's more like does your your musical past hold you back or is it a good just like it's is it a crutch or is it something that is a positive thing that you just carry with you all the time like do you know what i mean by that yeah i know exactly yeah yeah it's just your yeah does your musical past kind of help or hinder yeah Um, exactly yeah yeah Nice. That's a really good question. You said it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been doing these podcasts for a while now, so I'm used to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's a really good. I love the concept. Yeah, that's wicked. Yeah. Um. And if you've got an artist you could promote to the world that you think deserves some love, uh, you should all listen to Orbit Culture, like that. I've, we I've seen we brought them with us in both US and in Europe, and it's a fantastic band. And in a little while, I think they will have a new album out, and, and you should go get it. It's it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I can second that. I saw them live uh, a few months ago. They were, they were wicked. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. And anything you want to promote um, promote for yourself? 
promo myself. <laughs> uh, no, just, I mean, this new album, we're super stoked. Um, and I mean, it's been with us since last May ish. So I heard it a few times, but I, um, I'm really happy to release it and give it away to the world. And like I said, in this podcast, like it's our music have, it, it's like, I keep this album. It's, it's mine, but now 10th of February, it's going to be yours. And it, it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you feel and what you think. And, and I hope you enjoy it, you know, and, and I'm grateful for all the moments that we, we share stuff like that. So. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, man. Thank you.